Hello and welcome. My name is David Ridgway. Welcome to Kirkley's Local Television's Weekly Wind-Up. This is where we bring you a digest of the weekly news. We aim to be informative, interesting, amusing and provocative. We will be discussing two topics this week, the Mount Pleasant School Clock and the Odd Fellows. To help us find out more about these matters, I'm delighted to introduce to you two very old friends. I've not known them very long, it just happens to be that they are very old. Chris Marsden from the Huddersfield Civic Society is down on the left and sitting next to me is Andrew Porter from the Huddersfield Odd Fellows. Welcome to you Ben. But as always we want feedback from you. The weekly wind-up can be contacted by email on info at kirkleyslocaltv.com and you can search for us on Twitter at weekly wind-up. So Chris, let's start with you. The Mount Pleasant School Clock is of quite some age, but I don't know very much about it. Can you give us a bit of the history, please? Well, in the 1870s, Huddersfield developed its first board schools, the start of compulsory education, and they wanted to make civic presence of schools as it being the important thing of the time. And for two schools, they employed Charles Fowler, an architect from Leeds and Huddersfield and he built two schools, one in Oaks and one at Mount Pleasant. And they both feature rather stunning Gothic clock towers. Hmm. Um, the Mount Pleasant School has been um, renewed several times since, but the 1875 clock tower is a proud symbol in the community. Okay, and um, were these clock towers there to us uh, just simply as, a, a, as a, an example of civic pride? Or were they also to serve some sort of useful purpose for the local people? Oh, they would at the time, indeed. Of, in fact, they still do. They are um, timepieces, time, timekeepers for the community. So you know when to go to school because you can see the school clock. But people still say they look out in the morning and they, and they, and they use that clock. But it's also a, an iconic identity. It's part of the culture of the community. So um, the, the school's about to have further redevelopment. What's the, what's the thinking behind that? Under the government's um, priority school building programme, um, a contract is issued to a, um, a construction company to build a new school from basically one of a kit form. So it's um, not so much architect designed as you shall have this. And from the plans that we've seen, and it's only unofficially, um, the school appears to be incorporate the, the clock tower site, and there is no clock tower in the plans. There's been nothing official about this, it's just there's been no consultation, so it's a bit of a secret. I, I heard that um, the, the clock itself was used by the local people to make sure they got into the mills on time. Is, is that uh, just a, a rumour, or is that I think right? I, I mean, mill clocks were there to keep people to time at work, and li even the magnificent Lindley Clock Tower was really the put there so that um, Sykes' employees turned up. Oh, right. I, do you know, I didn't know that. That's interesting. Tell me, why would a, a developer find it necessary to demolish such an iconic landmark when, obviously, the local people wouldn't want that? Do they just not care? If you're a major contractor, you want the best profit for you for the site. Well, that sounds like they don't care. So the idea of actually cutting any expenditure which might be incurred in moving a plan across a field, uh, a, a, what, what we were brownfield sites, um, sounds like m uh, costing money, I suppose. But that's only an accountant's measure of it. Mm. I don't believe that in 18, sorry, 1985, when the school was redeveloped last time, um, anyone seriously thought of demolishing the clock tower. And the, the headmaster at the time, the head teacher Brian Wood, um, really organised the new school around the old building. So, Andrew, as a member of the public, what do you think about the retention of such an iconic landmark? Well, I think Huddersfield have got a rich heritage of keeping these landmarks going, and there should be some way of doing it. I mean, the clock hall at Ravensnow Park is a good example. I mean, many people won't know what the cloth hall was for, but we've still retained that building. So I think when you've got these iconic buildings, perhaps modern developments don't fit in with, with these buildings, but we should try and retain them in some way, and, and why not have somewhere where we can 
uh, keep them all in one place, perhaps. But the clock hall uh, after which Clough Hall Street is named is no more. No, oh, but it sits in Ravensdale Park. <laughs> well, all right, fine, OK. So that was moved uh, step yes, by step. Yes, and there's no reason why it couldn't be. Well, so we're all agreed, then, that, uh, that these, these things uh, are important for the heritage of our, of, of our locality, that, that, that the people would uh, expect us to do everything we can to retain such uh, a, a building. Um, how are we going to go about doing that, Chris? Well, the building could be kept in community use. It has been Lockwood Youth Club. It has been the um, Enterprise Centre. There's no reason why it can't carry on being a community use building if you move the school 20 feet away from the building. Is there enough room on the site to do that? Yes, there, there, there appears to be plenty of space. It's, we can realign it. it it's, this, it's this clean sheet attitude which is um, beyond our understanding. Mm -hmm. And all the petitioners who live in Lockwood have written saying how much they want the building to be saved because it's part of their community. Is there any support coming from a wider uh, degree of the public rather than just the local people in Lockwood? Oh, we have the architect who actually built the school in 1985. He, he wants to keep the, the old building. We have um, the Victorian Society supporting us. We have people around Huddersfield, people who've moved away from the area who remember it. Now, you and I have talked about the Victorian Society before, mm -hmm. and you will know that I am a bit of a fan of the Victorians. Well, you were born in that, in that time, David. So oh, how kind of you to say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and I very much am of, of the opinion that um, the Victorians taught us so much that the modern day um, uh, successors to, to their work just seem to, to disregard. Oh, the Victorians were, weren't um, great conservers of many things. They did as much damage as anyone else to our medieval past. Okay. Um, but that doesn't mean that which we build when we destroy other things isn't worth keeping. So in 100 years' time, when we talk about the destruction of uh, Mount Pleasant School, should it still be there, in its uh, potentially new modern architecture, which it might be getting without a clock tower, we will be uh, unhappy about the, the, the demolition of that to make way for a new school, which might in fact incorporate a new that, clock tower. That's always the, that's always <laughs> the, the potential, that mm. you can have good architecture at any time. We also have the ability to build bad buildings at any time, as Huddersfield can demonstrate. Well, I have to say, uh, Chris, and I think you've probably heard this before, that I am very much with Prince Charles on, on uh, carbuncles and that discussion with regard to modern architecture. But having said that, there is, uh, as you show me in, in the mm. concrete books, no, the books about concrete, um, that there is so much that can be um, celebrated in modern architecture. Uh, but at the same time, it is so important to preserve that which we feel is right to preserve. And I do hope that the campaign that the local people in Lockwood are now putting together will be successful and that the clock tower at Mount Pleasant School will be retained by the architects of the new school, taking into consideration um, what seems to be a very simplistic resolution to uh, what is perhaps not such a big a bigger problem as it might be. Would you agree with that, Chris? I think, David, it just requires conversation about the building and at the moment that's not happening. So I'm hoping our petition will encourage people to uh, say that this, there is strong support for preservation again. Excellent. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we'll take a break there. But we do want to hear from you on this matter. You can always contact us on info at kirkleyslocaltv.com and search for us on Twitter at Weekly Windup. Thank you very much. <laughs> However large or small your business, attracting new customers requires dedication and a lot of patience. Just like fishing, but you also need the right gear. Rods, reels, lines, hooks, sinkers, lures, tackle box, tackle bag, net, bait, gas gloves, clothes, and pocket knife lunch. Or you could simply advertise with KLTV. Online, grow your business and your clientele. KLTV, your vision made reality. Should have gone to KLTV. And welcome back. Andrew, 
We're going to come to you now. You've been a member of the Odd Fellows for a long number of years. What exactly are the Odd Fellows? Well, David, the Odd Fellows are a friendly society. Now, friendly societies are mutual organisations. Uh, and this particular one was set up about three, uh, 200 years ago uh, to look after the, the working man and to help the working man look after his family if he became sick or infirm. In mm. those days, there was no welfare state. Mm. And so if he was uh, sick, he'd, the family didn't eat. So these groups of people would band together and put the pennies into the funds and uh, help them to uh, eat when they were sick. So if they were, if they were poorly, they would draw some money out of the funds. In the early days, you see, there was no welfare state and, this, and the working man really had to do that to be able to afford to, to keep his family going. Mm. They were known as uh, sick clubs or pot clubs in those days. <laughs> I'm sure you've heard the term. I have. And in some cases, it grew big enough to employ uh, a doctor in the, in the area to look after the members of that particular section of the odd fellows. Mind you, the doctors were a bit iffy in those days as well. Well, they? they were, yes, but they were better than nothing. In other cases, some of the uh, odd fellows organisations, the friendly societies, grew that big that the government had to step in and uh, introduce legislation so that they made them have constitution and rules and things like that. Were they, were they uh, accused, perhaps, of taking the money for their own purposes rather than that for which they were there for? I think, I think there was a bit of uh, protecting both sides of the argument. One was protecting the people who were putting the money in, because uh, it's not just today when we get uh, cases where organisations suffer thefts by the people who are running them, but, uh, yeah. but, uh, but also they had thefts from the government as well, because they would take their share. In the early days, a registrar of friendly societies would charge them a fee, okay. and that was deemed to be unfair, really, because he didn't do anything, and they didn't really <laughs> want him. But, but that was that was then. <laughs> How times don't change. Yes, they don't. No. <laughs> but, uh, th they, they still are. Uh, they, they were then, and they still are today. A group of like-minded people who come together for mutual benefit. Mm. Only unlike in the old days, and we're not just for men only now, we're open to everyone, regardless of race, creed, colour or sex. But, but is the, is, is the organisation, the Offellers organisation, is it a self-help uh, organisation or do you actually uh, put money towards other good causes outside your own particular organisation? We do both, we do both. We, we look after our members uh, in any way that they might need it, in, any, in, in whatever way they want us to help them. Sometimes they come along and ask for help that we've never given before and we're quite happy to do it. Mm. It depends what the member wants. We're able to give them practically anything they need. We're able to look after their needs. Uh, we also help outside bodies. We uh, have local chairmen who raise funds for various charities, some local, some national, and we raise a lot of money that way. We also uh, donate funds to medical research as well on a national basis, and mm. we're quite rightly proud of that. Good. So we're helping the community in all different ways, as well as helping our members. Now then, I'm going to come to Chris uh, and ask you, Chris, as a member of the public mm. now, what's your knowledge of or connection with the Old Fellows? Well, I think it's magnificent movements that we had in the past centuries where we had friendly societies and building societies. So the building society was there for a very similar purpose, where people of like-minded would bind to would group together and arranged to, to, to raise money to build themselves houses. Mm. Um, and it's, not, it's interesting that the welfare state and modern commerce has taken over much of these functions. Is that for the good? Well, we have, a, we have the, we have the um, NHS and we have um, mutual banking now, still exists. Mm. And, and those are, are good things. Um, but as we can see with credit unions, they need, uh, they need to be well run. We recently lost uh, our local credit union in, Hudders in Huddersfield. Mm. And it's that type of um, what, what Cameron calls um, the big society is, uh, has always been there in my mind in this area. Right? Well, uh, do we, we talked earlier on about the Victorians and I'm very much of the opinion that the Victorians um, did so much good work on a, on a philanthropic basis that these big um, rough and tough and gruff uh, mill owners who had extracted the very last drop of profit out of the backs of their workers in whatever format they did, uh, they then wanted to buy their way into heaven. And so they set down their 
um, their, their new schools and their hospitals and, and their, their new road systems mm -hmm. and, and, and the sewage systems and, and, and so society as a whole benefited. But subsequent to that all happening, government took all this unto itself and now we're being told today they can't afford to run it anymore. So how are we actually going to get back to um, the, the, the originating times when the Og Fellows started, when uh, the, the welfare state um, had no, no, no say in, in looking after local people because there, there was no such organisation? How can we get back to that um, time when, when people were genuinely interested in looking after their next door neighbour? Well, I, I think they are genuinely looking at, interested in looking after the next door neighbour. Mm -hmm. Certainly the Odd Fellows and, and uh, friendly societies uh, do that now, with, with the distilling being and, and practising that particular uh, aspect of society. Mm. What, what we really need is, is for more people to come and join the organisation. It sounds like I'm trying to do an advert. Please do. But I'm, I'm, I'm not really, because if more people join self-help groups and people that look after each other, mutual, coming together for mutual benefit, mm. then society would be a really a, be a better place and we would be better geared up for uh, taking up any slack that might come when the, when the welfare state uh, gets eroded, as it is getting eroded, slowly but surely. Indeed. Well, I can tell you that there is going to be a lot of slack to be taken up because with the cuts which are coming from government into local government, the, uh, the, the work which Curtis Council has done in the past and has been accepted as the norm is no longer going to be the norm. Now, will the Oddfellows be an organisation that might potentially play a part in bridging that gap? Oh, ab absolutely, because we're already doing it. Mm -hmm. uh, our society offers those sort of benefits to uh, our members. It's affected both locally and nationally. Uh, at one point you used to get your dentistry work and if you went to the opticians your optical work done for free mm. and then they introduced the charge where well, we give our members a benefit to help cover some or all of that uh, taken up. We have uh, are able to signpost our members to various benefits that are uh, available to them and put point them in the right direction that might not be available to them nationally or locally. Uh, we also have a uh, help line that's set up that's equal to in status of the uh, Citizens Advice Bureau. So mm -hmm. I think we're quite prepared and, and already doing that sort of thing mm. so that when there's a further erosion of the health service or, or local government facilities, mm. we can be there and we can step, we are ready, willing and able to step in. Now taking this from a purely um, financial point of view, uh, we three um, I don't just say only we three, but we three are part of the great tax paying population of this country. We pay our taxes and those taxes are used to um, fund all, the, all those, those things, the, the NHS, education, um, road building and so on and so forth. Well, we used to fund road building, don't, we don't do too much of that these days. Um, but but uh, all, all those things, um, they, we, we just expect them as the norm. Now you're telling me, Andrew, that um, to be a member of the Odd Fellows, presumably you, you look to uh, an annual uh, fee? Oh yes. The right. Organisations like ours need, need funding. Uh, we, we have uh, large amounts of assets which were given to us when we joined handed down from generation to generation yep. and we feel it, it's incumbent upon us to hand in equal value that those assets back when, when we finish. Uh, does, but does this not mean uh, to some degree that, uh, that we're paying twice to get the same benefit that we've, we've been used to in the past? Because uh, we pay tax and we'll pay your annual fee? Well, that's a political argument and I don't want to get involved in that. Okay, fine, well we'll, we'll skate over that one then if you like, but uh, am, am I making an unfair point here Chris? I think it's concerning that we are being forced to pay for financial errors not of our making in the past decade mm. and that we are expected to um, uh, make taxation more regressive and less progressive so that we are paying more and getting less. 
Uh, indeed so, and not many, me, m many people are actually saying that in public, are they? No, no, it's, it's something that, that is uh, embarrassing for politicians in power. Maybe, well it's not embarrassing for me, <laughs> but maybe it's, maybe it's a very good time to be making that, that comment at this time. What are we now, 80 days away from a general election? But I'm, I'm really am interested, uh, Andrew, to hear that you are quite confident that the Oddfellows and other similar organisations can play their part. Uh, they, they can't resolve, because that would be ridiculous to ask if they could, but they can play their part in assisting the public at large to um, look to the future with a degree of confidence that all these cuts are not going to completely destroy their lives. Well, no, I mean, go back to what I said earlier, it's like-minded people coming together for mutual yeah. benefit. So if the government all of a sudden said there's no welfare state, these like-minded people would look after each other. There are still people out there who are genuinely interested in looking after everyone else's welfare. Indeed so. So there we have it. Our heritage is under threat. The cuts to local government are going to undermine much that local councils have done to support our normal way of life and to retain and to maintain a similar pattern, we're going to have to work so much harder and often in very different ways. Thank you, Chris, for a fascinating insight into Mount Pleasant School and its clock tower. And thank you, Andrew, for telling us about the Odd Fellows. I found this very interesting today. Thank you so much. You're but welcome. as always, we want to hear from you. You can always contact us at info at kirkleyslocaltv.com, us on email, and search for us on Twitter at Weekly Windup. Thanks very much. See you next week.